guys, today we have something absolutely huge. Today we are unboxing our first ever One Piece statue. And not only is it our first ever One Piece statue, it might be our biggest statue ever. But guys, before we start to talk about this statue, there's something I need to tell you. So guys, I have some incredible news. News that pertains to Hammer's Collection and its future. Hammer's Collection has a brand new sponsor. Somebody who's never sent us a statue before has now hopped on the train. And those people would be Favor GK. Now, I'm sure if you guys have shopped anime collectibles at all, you know who Favor GK is. But if you guys don't know who Favor GK is, let me tell you. Favor GK is a one-stop shop when it comes to anime collectibles. We're talking figurines, statues, posters, anything you could want from anime. And I was blessed enough to be selected as one of their sponsors. But you guys know me, I'm the kind of person who likes to go big or go home. So I had them send me one of their biggest statues out there. That's right. This is what we're unboxing today. This is a Ventus Studio statue, and it's most likely going to be one of the biggest ones we've ever built. It may even end up being bigger than our data right here, which will be a problem because he doesn't fit in my bookshelf. Whether or not you guys want to go big or go small with Favor GK, guys, you got to make sure you follow their TikToks and their Instagram to stay up to date with what they have in stock. Or you could just browse their website, favorgk.com. But with no further ado, let's get into unboxing what could be our biggest statue ever. It's time for everyone's favorite section. Nick slides a box out of a box that's filled with a box of styrofoam all by himself while massively struggling. But actually, this box I think is gonna come out easy on account of the fact that they put styrofoam along the sides here, which means that this box is not completely flush, so we can slide it out nice and easy. Hold up, so all I have to do is a little, oh, no, that wasn't the play at all. It's a very long box because it's a very, very full box and a very, very large statue. And just like that, oh my goodness, she is out. Now this box is truly something, and I probably shouldn't have said she in pertaining to this box, because the subject of our statue today is very much a he. In fact, the subject of our statue today is One Piece's best boy. Actually, I feel like that's a pretty hot take. It could be Chopper or Zoro, but it also could be Luffy. You know, when it comes to boxes, I feel like no anime does it better than One Piece. Both the Chopper box and this box are absolutely gorgeous. And this is roughly the shape of what we're gonna be looking at for our statue, but stylized into the art style of One Piece, which is absolutely gorgeous. Now I just finished Ennis Lobby, so technically I believe this is fourth gear, and I don't know, maybe that's fifth gear? All I know for certain though, is this Luffy looks a lot more shredded than the Luffy I currently know. But enough talk, let's get to everybody's second favorite bit. Nick takes a styrofoam box, out of a much prettier box if you can figure out how to undo the tabs of said pretty box. There we go, baby. Okay, hold up. This is awesome. I've actually never had this before. This statue literally comes with posters, with posters to show you exactly how you're supposed to build this statue. I don't know if this is artwork or you're supposed to hang or anything like that. Here, I'm gonna move my light because it's making a little glare there. But as you can see, this is the statue we're gonna be building. And it's a great frame of reference for, you know, what I think is probably gonna be a pretty complicated statue. Okay, let's get the sliding styrofoam out of a pretty box. I've pretty much mastered how to do this. You just have to grab the styrofoam and hold the box with your toes. Uh, which I feel like if I wasn't wearing socks, I would probably have to charge you to watch. But because I am wearing socks, I feel less bad about it. So one final pull here. Oh my goodness. This thing is heavy. Now let's get to my personal favorite part. The unstrapping of the Velcro. It's like opening a chest, man. It's like my, it's like Christmas morning for me. This statue also has another thing I've absolutely never seen. So obviously with your standard statue, you're gonna have layers, right? So your parts will be in here, separated by a couple of layers of styrofoam. But this statue for some reason has a kind of like cooler system where you take off this thin piece of styrofoam and you have access to a top layer of pieces. And that is a lot of pieces for just one layer. But it doesn't have our base and that's where we like to start. So we got to do a little digging. So I'm assuming that our base is probably in the second layer because that's you, no, okay. It's definitely not there, but we might as well take this top layer off because we know for a fact the base isn't there. Our second layer seems to have 
Most of Luffy's first body, because there is technically two Luffy's in this statue, which means that our base can be only on this third and final level, but apparently we didn't cut all the tape, so we gotta keep doing that. All right, now that our trusty X-Acto blade has done all the work for us here, what's funny is the top two layers, very light, but this box itself was very heavy, and I'm starting to see why the bottom layer is carrying the majority of the weight. Obviously, we've found our base, which is big. About as big as our data base, which might be an issue because, well, usually if it's built like this, it's probably not fitting on our bookcase. But look at this absolutely gorgeous base. Oh my goodness. The skull with the mouth open, the inside being red. A lot of the colors on this are black and red. There's gonna be a bunch of heavy accents of black and red. All throughout this, we have these tiny little skulls on the side. Oh my goodness. What an incredible start to this statue. What's truly, truly wild is that this incredibly large base probably isn't even the heaviest part of this statue. I would say the heaviest part is probably our next part, which is this absolutely massive gear for body of Luffy here. Look at this. The texture, the musculature of the arm, the veins, it is absolutely gorgeous. Some of the most details I've ever seen in a statue, period. I wanna give you guys a closer look at this because it is literally awe-inspiring. The back muscles, the glossy texture of the parts that are using, I believe it's called hockey, and look at the massive scar, Luffy, looks absolutely shredded. Not even to mention the fabric texture. As you can see, the fabric texture is quilted. It feels like corduroy. It's incredible. It's showing motion and flowing action here. And then we have Luffy skipping leg day and we won't talk about what that peg looks like. But enough of showing him off. Let's get him set in this base. I believe he goes right there, but look at the peg and he does all my goodness, now that is a hot start to a statue. But like we said at the beginning of this unboxing, this statue features two separate Luffy's. We have Gear 4 Luffy here, this massive one, and then, I don't know, this might be regular Luffy or Gear 5. Like I said, I'm in Ennis Lobby, but the detail on this is also absolutely breathtaking. Just like with the big Luffy, the musculature is incredibly detailed. The scar looks super realistic. The fabric is super flowy. I even love these patches that they sewed into his fabric. And then obviously, for some reason, Luffy has a sword. So at some point, Luffy switches to a swordsman. You know, it's funny, one of my mutuals, Allie Bug, she's a huge One Piece creator. She actually got shipped Luffy's sword and it took her a second to recognize what it was. And that's the only reason that I know that Luffy did get a sword because she got shipped it, but that's complete exposition. Without name dropping any more creators that I'm mutuals with, let's get small Luffy slotted in to his position atop this skull. So both of his feet have slots, which is really nice. There was a hole right where that foot went in and a hole right on that rock. So we really don't have to worry about Luffy slipping anywhere. And just like with Luffy's sword, while he may not use the next object we're gonna put on him, he does need it nonetheless. Now this is obviously the head for our big Luffy. And just like with the body, the details are absolutely mesmerizing. The veins in his forehead, the flowiness of his hair, even down to how his teeth are painted. And I lied before, he does use his head, he uses his mouth to eat. So let's make sure that he can eat after this fight and give him his head, which looks very small on that body. I wanna take a second to bask in the glory of what we've already built here. I mean, the full bodies coming in one pieces is incredibly rare. You never see that. Usually you have to put an arm on or a leg on, and this all but guarantees that these pieces won't break, which is super, super nice. Not to mention the base of this statue is absolutely breathtaking. I am loving where this is going. This is actually quickly becoming one of my favorite statues I've ever made. But since we're talking about Luffy's head game, we actually have two options for our next of Luffy's heads. We have him smiling with a ponytail, or we have him frowning with a top knot. I think I actually prefer him smiling just because it's Luffy and why wouldn't he be smiling? Also, just like with the large head, the detail on this is absolutely gorgeous. The ponytail alone is a masterpiece. So let's go ahead and once again, give Luffy the thing he never uses, his head. 
And just like with the top one, it's magnetic and snapped on there like a breeze. And I know what you're worrying about. You're saying, Nick, what are you gonna do with the other head? Well, don't worry. Like with any good statue, there's a secondary head holder. And now it may look like we're almost done with the statue. Trust me, we are far from done. There are a bunch of these ghouls with one horn and long hair who need to go into the base. And these things look absolutely terrifying. I don't know what part of One Piece has literal horror creatures in it, but I don't know if I'm excited for that part. Our first creature goes right there. Easy as that. Our next devil has two horns. And honestly, on these devils, I kind of want to take a second to give appreciation to their mouths. The detailing on their teeth is super impressive and very intricate. Not to mention how ornately their eyes are painted. And these are just little things that go into the base. These are not the main players in the statue at all. Our next demon or devil or ghoul goes right about here. And that brings us to our final two, who honestly look like they could be related. Our first of the brothers goes right over here. And I know you can't really see that, but we're gonna do a broad span of the entire base after I've put in his other brother, who for some reason doesn't have a horn. However, that brother could be found right about there. And all of them are magnetic, so they snap into place immediately. So let's take a second to appreciate these horrific creatures climbing their way out of this absolutely gorgeous skull base. I mean, these things are truly nightmare fuel, and I think this guy's already having nightmares about them. But since we're working on the base, we have a couple of other accent points we need to put in there. So these skulls go right there. And just like with the ghouls, they're magnetic. Honestly, I never thought I would see Luffy standing on a pile of bones and demons, but I'm still about 500 episodes, I think, from when this happens. So apparently a lot of stuff goes downhill between Ennis Lobby and this. What I'm also just now realizing is that this giant skull that Luffy's standing on has horns. It's like the corpse of the first demon in Black Clover. So let's give it its horns so that we know that it's a true devil that Luffy is standing on the corpse of, which is incredibly metal. Look at that. That looks awesome. I realize you probably couldn't see the horns from that angle. So I'll go ahead and give you your best possible angle. This horn is a bit tucked away behind Luffy's cloak and all that, but you can see this one pretty clearly. The only pieces left for the base are these two jagged rock things, but I have absolutely no idea where they go, so we'll do these last. But I feel as though I must address a crucial mistake. I haven't yet given Luffy his straw hat. And of all of the One Piece statues I've seen, and I've seen a good amount of them, I feel like this is arguably the most accurate straw hat I've ever seen. We even have the three holes in the top that Nami patched, edges taken out of it through all of the battles. It's not in the good condition that Red Hair Shanks wanted it to come back to him in, but Luffy's lived a pretty tough life. Obviously, Luffy's not wearing his hat. The ponytail wouldn't allow that, so we have to take his head off of him, which it doesn't really want to move, and we have to slide that over and it sits right there behind Luffy's head. You lock him on and then he's got his straw hat. We are still very far from being considered done with this statue because this statue literally has a built-in backdrop that goes right here behind gear four Luffy. If I, oh God, was I supposed to do this first? No, never mind. We're good. I figured it out, sort of. I think it's backwards. It was backwards. So we have to put this giant ring behind Gear 4 Luffy, and it should slide in there. Never mind. It's not, you see, it's not doing that. Oh, there we go. I got it. I got it. The ring is it. See, this ring serves a super important purpose. It's basically going to hold a lot of the flare items that we have on the statue. The most important of which being this flame effect, which has two magnets right here and right here, which snap into our gear for Luffy, but rest upon this ring. Now, this flame effect is a bit tricky because we do have to loop it under both of gear for Luffy's arms before we can even start to snap it into these magnets. So now that we've looped it under his left arm, we can start to finagle it towards the correct direction here. But the problem is you also have to get it under this arm in between the small Luffy. So like I said, a bit of a trick here. Um, probably would be easier if I decapitated small Luffy. Yep, okay. So slide that in there now, and then we push those two magnets into their respective holes. 
and boom! Flame effect. And then we obviously have to give Luffy his head back. So I wanted us to get a look at what that ring looks like as a backdrop with the flame effect there. It is an absolutely gorgeous way to frame this statue. You see, I truly believe this might be the most detailed statue I've ever built. This statue has so many accents in little things. It's got flags I have to put on the side. In fact, I have to read Decapitate Big Luffy because he comes with two necklaces I didn't put on him. So let's go ahead and get gear for Luffy who somehow has necklaces that regular size Luffy doesn't have all dripped out. I don't necessarily know the orientation that these necklaces have to go in. I simply know they have to be on him, so we'll just snap those on and hope he's happy with that situation. As for these flags, fortunately they're both color-coded and directional, so I know exactly where I need to put them, but look at the detail of these flags. The kanji lettering is absolutely gorgeous. The torn effect of the flag on the sides there is awesome. The movement of the fabric, the dimpling of the fabric to make that corduroy effect. Even the wood post itself, look at the top there. Looks like a true broken piece of wood. What was truly absolutely incredible about these flags is that the diameter of the wooden poles was just barely different enough. So if you tried to put the wrong flag in the wrong hole, it wouldn't fit. As you can see, we have the blue and gold flag up front and the purple and red flag in the back. And it's flipped on the other side with the purple and red up front and the blue and the gold in the back. I am just realizing now these photos I was looking at, yeah, actually the front cover to assembly instructions. And basically what the instructions have told me is that these rock pillars that I couldn't find a location for are technically optional because you can switch them out with the skulls or the bones. So either you can have the skulls right there or you can have these rocks right there. They both fit in, they're perfect magnetic fits. And you know, the rocks look cool and all that, but I'm much more a skull and bones guy. Now basically all that's left is a bunch of accents, a bunch of accents that look like this. They're kind of like cloud accents, you know, the things that come off of Luffy when he's fighting, like the steam he generates. All right, it took a lot of consulting the assembly guide, but we got all of those four accents in. Let's show those off. Let me just say that I am thankful that this is not the first statue I've ever built because this has so many details and so many intricacies. I had to find where this little detail snapped into Luffy's cloak and then in the back of this ring there was a snap in for this accent giving it a nice 3D effect, really gorgeous smoke effect on that accent. And then over here this accent snapped into gear for Luffy's upper back and then wraps around all the way to here. And then this last accent snapped into that little horn right there. Really just floating after connecting to that horn. Really, really impressive way to make 3D cloud effects on a statue. And that basically only leaves us with these small Luffy accents. This pink is honestly my favorite color in the entire world, so I'm very excited about that. And what I'm just now realizing about these accents is that they actually have Sakura petals in them, which I believe is a gorgeous little touch. These, like the rest of the statue, are magnetic and therefore pretty easy to just throw in place. Now, according to our assembly guide, I was supposed to do these significantly earlier, which is why I kind of have to finagle them in like that, but they're still in there. Now, this piece, like the other two, is not magnetic and is really gonna teach me the lesson that maybe I should put the small pieces in before I put the big pieces in, because just like with our accent mark earlier, I now have to finagle this piece through a couple of already existing pieces to make sure that it's gonna go where it needs to go. Cause it needs to go in front of small Luffy, but it plugs into the back of his black hand here and sits just like that. And just like that, Luffy's accents are done. The pink shade in the Sakura petals coming off of his body are absolutely gorgeous. They were a breeze to get in there. Would have been a lot easier if I hadn't slapped him in here before I put them on, but still very, very easy. But with the addition of a few extra bones, we have a complete 
completed statue. What's wild about these final bones is that there was actually two rocks that you could use to replace them, just like with these bones over here. So it's almost like the statue company is giving you a PG version to this statue, which is a bit odd to me when you consider the fact that these ghouls are almost definitely not replaceable and I would say their presence is far from PG. But outside of the sheer metalness and amazing quality of this statue, there's one more thing about it that makes it unique. It's got a plug-in and they sent me a cable. And when you plug it in, this statue shows its final form. Yeah, that's right. The mouth glows and it lights up the eyeballs. That is truly gorgeous. Unfortunately for me, I don't have much in the way of an outlet over there, assuming this will even fit, which it most likely won't. So that probably won't be plugged in the majority of the time. But let's take a final look at this statue, man. This thing blew me away. Starting with the base, the pile of skulls and bones and the ghouls climbing out, absolutely breathtaking details. The horns on the skull, which are hidden behind Luffy and all of that, the way that these smoke effects seem to just hang in the air is truly better than anything I've seen on a statue yet. I mean, truly, you almost can't see where these smoke effects plug in. It makes them look as though they're floating. Luffy himself, incredibly detailed. His smile, absolutely gorgeous. Musculature, super defined. His aura glowing off him with this pink Sakura petal combo, absolutely incredible. The gear forehand, absolutely jumping through the background set with that circle there. I mean, if you really look down the hand of this, you can see the hand almost climbing out of that circle. Gear for Luffy, the necklaces, absolutely gorgeous. Where did he get them? Absolutely great question. The flowiness of the hair, the flame effect, and yes, of course, our background of our circlet. Even just looking at this statue from the back is incredible. I love seeing Luffy's back through the circle, kind of like a window into the statue, seeing the smoke effects come around the circle itself, and even this detail on the center of that background circle, absolutely gorgeous. You see the rippling of the flags in the back, and you also see this explosion of rock coming out. But now we get to play the game that I've only ever had to play within the context of trying to fit a statue in a bookcase, Will, it fit. If you don't understand that joke, I'm not gonna explain it to you. Final answer, no, not really, but sort of, it doesn't fall over. I mean, it fits better than Datara fit, but that's mostly because Datara's 99% wing. And that brings us to our absolute final thing, our authenticity token, which as you can see is a metal small rendering of our statue. And if you flip it to the back, you can see that we got 453 out of 555. And just like that, arguably our biggest and most detailed ever statue is done. And oh my goodness, is it imposing. To think that all of this started with an Itachi statue that now sits there at probably half the size of this Luffy statue, absolutely insane. I'd like to once again thank Favor GK for sponsoring today's video. Without them, none of this would have been possible. And if you guys are trying to break into the anime collectible space, there is no better place to start than with Favor GK. They are your one-stop shop for anything you might need or want. They sent me that statue. It got here two weeks ahead of scheduled time, and it is incredible incredible quality. So once again, guys, go to favorgk.com to get access to all of these anime collectibles and make sure you follow their TikTok and Instagram for updates on what's new to their website. And while you guys are clicking and doing things with your fingers on that there keyboard and mouse, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell.